Residents to the Dr. DC podcast. My name is Producer Richard. And next to me is the Doctor himself. The Doctor. <laughs> yeah. And remember, with our new format, I give away the the address of one listener every episode. Do I'm re- the Doctor. <laughs> Do you remember when Tom Green did that? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When he every that was with his own phone number. No, it was with it? the uh, with his like producer or whatever. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah his yeah. co-host. Uh, but speaking of an additional person on uh, media <laughs> thing, uh, <laughs> wow. Today, no, finish the thing first. Uh, oh, each week we talk about the weird and wonderful world of DC while fielding questions from listeners like you. Four hundred and seven episodes in, and we've got it down. Oh yeah, we are uh, 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 penultimate uh, experts. <laughs> Sorry, penultimate. What does that even mean? Uh, is that the last? No, penultimate means second last. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So we're the second last expert. <laughs> Here's the first. What is this show? Today we are joined by, it's not John's Carrots, it's John's Peas. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Hey, welcome back. Thank uh, you. John, you're, you're joining us because... Uh, yeah, we we figured out a date for this because y- your podcast is ending. Whoa, yeah. really? Yes, I thought uh, I thought what better way uh, to end a podcast than to try to get onto a bunch of other podcasts to talk about how my podcast is going to be no more. I kind of love it. It's sort of like a reverse plug. Where it's like you <laughs> you go on a bunch of other shows, and be like, where can they find you? He's like, you can't. That's ironic because <laughs> normally I say what podcasts are people from when I announce them, and I just forgot to do it yeah. for this. God, I'm good. Like I said, 407 episodes in. I'm I'm almost like I'm ahead of the game. Now. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, I should probably so, plug wait, the podcast. So wait, your, your show is your show is ending. Yes. What, what's well, that, one what's of our shows like? is ending. <laughs> yeah, please tell me. I'd love to know what that feels like. <laughs> it's a it's a little bittersweet. Uh, so I am one of the co-hosts of the Blast from Our Past podcast, a nostalgic look back at the media of our childhood, mostly focusing on like the late '70s to the early 2000s movies tv albums a whole bunch of stuff um we've had the the luxury of having both of you gentlemen on mm-hmm. uh for a couple episodes and whatnot yeah i remember taking um, and over yes we a are of those episodes. Uh, absolutely yeah <laughs> uh we are ending uh we're gonna be ending on episode 300 and uh the reason we are ending is i cannot stand my brother anymore yeah <laughs> Uh, it actually is not true because our other podcast is still going. Uh, no, he is uh, going back to school. So well, my brother enough. Adam, who is a or is my is our co-host or my co-host, uh, is going to get his master's, and it is already starting to become a bit of a burden. So we had to downsize how, how what we were doing, and as we put a lot of time and effort into making the Blast from Our Past sound good. Uh, it seemed like the most likely one for us to end because it just takes it takes a lot of time to to prep that particular podcast. Well, do you know what? That's good news for us because we put no prep time into this, so we can keep doing it forever. <laughs> I mean, I put a little bit of prep time into no this. No prep time whatsoever. <laughs> well, I mean, clearly somebody doesn't just copy and paste. <laughs> nope, I'm just going to cop. No, I'm not going to copy or paste. I'm going to look at a thing and then try to write it. As I see it, big talk from the guy that didn't didn't plug the guest's podcast because he's ending top. it, and also <laughs> you can't remember the intro if he's not reading it. No, that's not true. I read it and still didn't know it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so in in honor of uh, of your show, which you know it, I know it wasn't the only thing you talked about, but a big thing you you talked about on your show was music. Yes, uh, I I came on one time to talk about Goo Goo Dolls' uh, "Dizzy Up the Girl" album, yep. so, which yeah. is the I most think, you. Thing. I think it's one of the most me episodes <laughs> of any podcast that's out there. <laughs> um, but uh, we're doing today's episode on the music of DC, and, yeah. and I'm I'm absolutely excited to talk about it because that's one of the one of the things I always focus on when I go see something DC related in media is does the music match you know right. the story the character whatever it is do do you like is 
Is there a moment you remember where that became the thing that you would latch on to in, in any movie? Or or is there like a particular um, movie where you were like, oh man, that score is wild, and then you kind of were looking for it from then on? Um, I will I will so I knew in about high school that music was gonna be a focus for me. Um, but even before that, I will go ahead and say that, and I've mentioned this before, if you've heard me on this podcast or even on other other podcasts saying this. My first memory, my first actual memory of going to a movie theater to see a movie was the 89 Batman. Oh, sure. And that theme has always stuck with me. So right. that's probably the first time when I was like, oh, music means something in this. Yeah. I um, mean, and that's, I think that's, God, it's so, so iconic, too. It's yeah. a huge, huge theme. Yeah, I, mean, I, think I think the sequel is probably my first movie memory, to be honest. Batman Returns? Okay. Yeah, that's probably one of my very first movie memories. M my... Uh, really? Well, yeah. That came out in 92. <laughs> yeah. And so not for kids. Well, yeah, but I mean, my family... Yeah, sure. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I was going to say, like, my first movie memory is, like, years later. Like I think it's Star Trek Generations, really. Which is I love you. Like it's like 90... yeah, more of like a kid's yeah. entrance to movies, and, and only like two or three years later. Yeah, yeah. like not that different. <laughs> Odd, <laughs> oddly I'm enough, so I remember. I remember my movie. experience uh, seeing uh, Star Trek Generations in the theater, uh, and being completely disappointed by it. I was too stupid to know what I liked. I, although, to be honest, I do like I was going to say, I'm like, you still do. <laughs> I was about to try and pretend like I was cooler than it. I'm not. We just very recently made fun of the fight scene in that if, when we were doing a different commentary. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we got, we got a bunch of questions about music in DC. Should yeah. We, you, you're both musical fellows. So. That's right. So I'm expecting you to participate, Richard. Wow. So, Richard, yeah. I actually don't know your musical background. Oh yeah, I was uh, I was in a touring band for a long time. I did the whole music videos, things, recorded albums. Uh, basically, up until like about ten years ago, I was like a professional musician. Please tell me it was Crash Test Dummies. I mean, um, does that answer your question? <laughs> you did, baby. You, you did. did. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. It was pop. It was post punk. I mean, come on. Uh, what did you play? Uh, I played uh, lead guitar and lead vocals. Nice. And sometimes every other instrument just for the album, if you couldn't trust your band to do it? No, if they <laughs> failed in recording, I would take over. It's well, nice. actually, I'm glad that you said this, because I actually have a bunch of like uh, post-modern punk songs that I was co-writing with someone, and they bailed on me, so I need lyrics and shit, so I might call on you, man. Hey, buddy. We know I got the equipment. Oh, my God. He's back <laughs> in the game. That's right. You couldn't take me out. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the music of the movies of DC, the, the TV, the AC of DC. What? Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He's good. All right. We're starting over, speaking of music, on Facebook. <laughs> Go do the face of the book. Go do the Facebook. God, he's hot. Let him cook. Let me cook. First question comes from Braden Ketty who asks what are your thoughts on the iconic Batman the animated series theme Whoa. well I mean ironically it doesn't have its own theme it uses the Elfman theme right Batman it's, 89 it's basically the Batman 89 theme which is a fantastic theme to use yeah. I mean they were very smart for that because uh, people you know, it'd been a while since we've had really had had anything Batman up until that point. And so we'd already I, I can't remember if the second movie had come out by the time that the animated series had come out. They were definitely um, already working on the animated series, because if the animated series did drop in like 92, it means they've been working on it for like a right. year or whatever. So, yeah. Um, but I mean, at that point, we were all associating that new theme with Batman. And since the animated series and it was not exactly as dark, I think, as, as Tim Burton's vision of it. I, I think it was close enough that it, they were just smart to just utilize it. It was already there. Warner Brothers already owned it. Why not use it? Yeah, I mean, obviously the tone of the show is a bit different from the movies, but they were still going for this very, like, dramatic kind of dark edge to it where mm -hmm. where Burton takes that as, like, I want things to be creepy. And right. where they took it on the show was making it more like noir 
ish, right? Yeah. Like the, the mm-hmm. one thing they always said about I the c- show was that they would they would take uh, instead of like white um, panels and color them, they take black panels and then color over them for the animation. So yeah. that's why everything everything had this extra layer of darkness to it. I've always kind of associated the movie with like, um, uh, with like sort of gothic noir, and the yeah. TV show with like Art Deco noir. Absolutely, totally. that's perfect. Yeah. Um, what? How do you feel about like the the Batman score, the the Burton, like the Elfman uh, score for Batman? I mean, here's the thing. I think it's almost become more ubiquitous than the '60s Batman like yeah theme which i think mm-hmm. up until maybe i think maybe our generation was probably the last generation that was like na, 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 batman <laughs> like with right. that that's what we thought of and i feel like now like we even used it as like a as a punchline when we were doing the uh the alfred begins yeah which was like that's <laughs> yeah, like that's when yeah. you feel like batman showing up you're just like nah, 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 nah. Yeah, it's, it's like true. it's it's so easy to be like, oh, it's Batman. Like, I think that's almost become his like, that's the Batman theme. It, I think at least for our generation, like, I feel yeah. like that's as close to a Batman theme as we I, have. I find yeah. that slightly ironic considering your theme song is the old <laughs> Batman. Theme song. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because but, I think it would be a lot more weird to have like, it's definitely not the tone of our show. Yeah, I mean, it is funny, you know. There, we'll talk about some of the other ones as we go through these questions. But you know, like we get so many Batman, right? Uh, and they each have like great kind of scores or themes or whatever. But mm-hmm. none of them are as like hummable as like much of an earworm as that Elfman one. You know, like yeah. right. the Hans Zimmer one is almost all like percussion. It's just that like. Da-da, 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 da-da. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's good in the movies. Like when you watch it, it, it totally works. But it's like the memorable. Elfman one is like, it's just in there. It's like a hook, you know. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go to the next question. Okay, uh, we're leaving uh, Braden Caddy and we're heading to Ryan Putney. Uh, Putney on ground, on ground. Uh, <laughs> and he asks, "Tell me what DC score has either given you chills or has moved you emotionally." Ooh, that's a tough question. I, I've got, I've got one. If... Of course you do. You're you're a blubbering baby when it yeah. comes to action movies. <laughs> I mean, so. I, I really am. I I, I have one people... too, but I want to hear Reed's first. I mm. love when people like achieve. come together. Or, or, or I, I think it's broader than that. It's like when people achieve yeah. in a movie. <laughs> but I... you love when people come together for a common goal. Yes, but this the only reason I say this is that this is a slight deviation. This example that. isn't really about like a team. Sure. You're sure. But yeah. it's, it's Hunt Zimmer's man of steel stuff. And specifically oh. when, when he learns to fly, oh. it's when he gets the suit finally overcoming odds. Yeah. And he comes and, and it's got Russell Crowe's Jor-El like monologue over top. And he's like out on the ice and it's like, you will, you will guide them. They'll follow you in the oh, sun. You know, like, yeah. All this kind of like, and it's like swelling and, and then he, you know, takes off and, and flies. He's like, you're doing it. <laughs> Peter Pan. <laughs> I, just, I just, that, that one, like truly like hair standing up that I think that sequence is basically perfect. That's the frustrating thing for me about Man of Steel is that it has a bunch of moments like that where you're like, this is perfect. And then it's got other <laughs> stuff where you're like, no. <laughs> but, that's true. Uh, but that that's the one for me, definitely. What about you, John? Uh, okay, so mine is... It, uh, mine's an interesting story because the one that often that moved me the most is one that is associated with DC, but I don't associate it with DC. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain. So, uh, I'm talking about the Krypton theme from John Williams' score to Superman. Sure. And the reason is, this is kind of a backwards story, but uh, when I was in college, uh, the University of Georgia, I was in the university marching band. And uh, before each football game, the band, not including myself, because my section didn't play during this, um, would gather in front of the student union and play a bunch of songs. One of the songs we would play was Krypton. Sure. Interesting. And uh, I was in what was called the front ensemble. So it was like the marimbas, the xylophone, the timpani, stuff like that. The stuff that actually isn't on the field because it's too fucking heavy to <laughs> Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, so we didn't play during this part. 
And we had a tradition that whoever was the smallest person in the front ensemble had to get flown during Krypton. So the four <laughs> biggest guys would take the, usually the smallest girl and we would lift them up above our heads and we would fly them. And um, there was a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful girl that for some reason I just blanked on her name because, you know, I'm getting old and I can't remember <laughs> anything. Um, and she was there when I first got to the uh, got to the school, and she was always Superman. So she was always the one that we flew. We would we like literally at the end we would back practically throw her in the air. Um, and awesome. uh, several years back, I found out that she passed away from cancer. Oh, and so no. my most my most memorable memory of her is Krypton. So every time I hear Krypton, it makes me think of that moment of college of us just sure. having fun you know, flying her above all the people and stuff like that. So yeah. it's not exactly about <laughs> about a movie. Right. But that particular song brings that particular emotion. Totally. Me. No, that's that's a that's a great one. Richard, do you, do you have one? Yeah, uh, follow that, Richard. Come to mind. Is it uh, is it when Hallelujah plays during Watchmen? <laughs> no, uh, but it is uh, uh, similarly hilarious of an answer. <laughs> OK, all right. Which is uh one is there's two trailers. Oh, okay. Uh, one is the uh, the Justice Leagues. The icky thump. <laughs> it, it worked so well. It's the only thing good from that first movie. <laughs> I mean that, and that trailer, like, yeah, it works. Yeah. It got me excited <laughs> for that movie, a movie that I was sort of like uh, uh, worried. Well, about that first it. trailer too was when Snyder was still in charge. Yeah, so it was like, and then the trailers got weird, and then in the Snyder cut, we we're like, "Icky thumbs back." Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. Like, I, I actually really loved. Oh that. no, actually, no. Wait, hang on. They use Icky Thump in the in the Justice League one. It's not yeah. Icky Thump. In the, it's yeah, the slow yeah. Nick Cave song. Yeah, <laughs> God. No, I hate that version. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, the icky really thump. Funny. It's it worked so well. It got me so fucking stoked. It does get you get you going. Uh, it's that, and then I can't, for the life of me, I cannot remember. I guess these aren't scores; these are more soundtrack. But um, it's the original Suicide Squad trailer. Okay, but what song? Did I, you I'm use trying in to. That? I'm desperately trying to remember. But I mean, I remember, that first trailer for that first Suicide Squad was also decent. It was. That, I mean, it was one of like the best movie trailers I've ever seen. It was a right? very good trailer, yeah. Uh, and I can't remember. If it, I thought I thought it was like Queen for a minute. I was like trying to remember. Oh, maybe it was. Yeah. Was it We Are the Champions? I might have been. Um, let me just double check here. Uh, but I think like for me, like a, a good trailer. So yeah, it's Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was a cover of Bohemian Rhapsody by Pop Rockers Panic. Interesting. Um, but and it was just I remember being so good. That trailer was so good. That trailer was great. It was so good that they thought that maybe if they recut the movie by the people who did the trailer, <laughs> yeah. it would be a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh didn't work, no, but didn't. uh uh but that's how good that trailer was. That's and, fair. I mean I mean, I'll throw a trailer one out there just for yeah. for kicks. For me, it's the this was music that was in the movie, but the way that they the tr the uh, not the first trailer maybe the second trailer or whatever yeah, yeah. for batman v superman okay it starts with a little string thing because they're at the party and like it's when clark and bruce meet yeah, yeah. and then the strings cut out and it's the like sure and then it had that like Wait, that's where they put like the word uh, yeah. cards in and like shit it just it totally had my number that trailer was like also yeah, the trailer for Batman v Superman is like maybe the best version of that movie. <laughs> Truly, yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes the trailers hit. Yeah, I'll, uh, I mean, it's an art form unto itself. Absolutely. I'll throw out a trailer one. Please Although they, it, yeah. they did use the song in the movie, but I'm I'm pretty sure they also used it in trailer. Uh, the Batman, uh, the use of something in the way. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. When when I when I was a, a kid, I had the the Nevermind tape. And I would often listen to it like right before I went to bed. I had to listen to it on low because my mom could not conceive of the fact that I would be listening to that right as I was trying to go to sleep. But I was I would always end on something in the way. And that song always kind of hit me a little a little bit differently, especially when I was a kid and I was yeah. really figuring out what music meant to me. And so when I first heard that, 
in the trailer, I'm like, oh, this is this is gonna hit differently. I think they overused it a little bit in <laughs> yeah, the movie. I was, yes, so- I was just gonna say it works so well in the trailer, and then you watch you're watching the movie, and I like that movie, but it like by the third time they needle drop it, <laughs> yeah. like, could, is do we blow all of the budget on something <laughs> in the way? Truly, though, yeah. it's a great it's a great one though. I really really like. Yeah, that. that's a good one. Uh, all right, let's go to the next question. Okay, from Chicken Maddie. Bark, bark, bark. Uh, who asks, since we've had a had metal slash death metal, what other music genres should go in uh, in an event comic? Oh, interesting. Right. So DC had two like big crisis events. One was called Dark Knight's Metal. And one was called Dark Knight's Death Metal. And mm-hmm. Technically, it's about like the metals of creation. Sure. Like there's the metals of the gods is the eighth metal. Yeah. There's nth metal, which is a thing in DC. That's the ninth metal. And then element X is the tenth metal. It's the metal of like creation. Sure. Or but then aesthetically, it the books take on a metal look. Oh, buddy. Spikes, leather, you know, <laughs> I all that fucking, kind of stuff. Like, I have this. It's like and there is some like stuff inspired by music yeah. in the story mm-hmm. too but for the, but basically like aesthetically it takes on the look of metal they basically find a way to make metal metal part of the story but they're like sure. we want to make a thing that looks metal as hell it's essentially hell the yeah. pitch for the event so what's a what's a genre of music that you think might also lend itself to like a sort of like visual aesthetic or a big like kind of event? it all just came to me right now all right hit me so i'll give you the music first okay no you know what i'll give you the pitch actually i'll give you the lead up okay, okay. so swamp thing we're in a situation right, right. now where uh, we we've lost uh the the trees We've okay. now got the, uh, what is it? The Oh, the Parliament of Parliament Trees of is Tree- gone. We have the Parliament of Flowers. We have the Parliament right. of Flowers, right? Where we're in this weird time where Swamp Thing's trying to figure out, like, how do we work with the Parliament of Flowers? What do they want? We're in this weird sort of space with Swamp Thing right now. I introduce Bluegrass. Oh, my God. <laughs> I almost was thinking, I was almost going to say Bluegrass myself. So bluegrass, it's uh, it's it works as an analogy for like uh, um, uh, Americana and like where America is right now, the lack of hope and the the, the separation of the the sort of like two parties, the the oh it's God. everything's sort of like not working well together. America constantly wants to go back to when it worked, but that actually doesn't exist and doesn't work as well as it could have. So we need to sort of look into the future. Obviously, flowers we're talking about like in- inclusionary, more like uh, LGBT inclusionary things like that that conversation's happening we get the visual sort of uh americana throughout the entire thing uh and it's uh bluegrass it's a conversation about hope for the future blue associated with superman and hope uh right. and the uh, rings listen i love all of that but the last piece of this yeah. is visually yeah it's how, americana it's how, so you go kind of like like tim sale Norman yeah Rockwell, yeah like, exactly you know, yeah 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 very earnest but again you get like carved woods and things like that like it works so well from a swamp thing standpoint. well huh i like it hell yeah i wasn't ready for bluegrass <laughs> but i like it um john do you have do you have a pitch so i was thinking about it i did think about bluegrass but bluegrass actually in the grand scheme of things is actually not terribly old like we can we can pinpoint exactly when, where, and actually who kind of invented the genre. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, which would be uh, the the mandolin master himself, Mr. Bill Monroe. Oh, uh, buddy. Uh, from his, uh, him and the, his, his uh, Bluegrass Boys, I think was the name of his band, which is where the name comes from. Um, so when you're, when, when you're thinking of like an event, this I immediately went to Gotham by Gaslight. Oh, love. And instead of instead of by instead of a steampunk version, I want an old west version of this in in the the western uh, western North America. You know, we can include Canada in this. Doesn't just have to be. (laughs) It doesn't have to just be the Southwest. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, and I can't exactly say country because again, country is later. This it would be more akin to Americana or. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, before they called it country, they actually called it hillbilly music. Right. Um, until the hillbillies got offended that they were calling them hillbillies and they changed it to country music. Um, <laughs> but it would be, it would have to be something like that. 
Yeah, that sort of in... old old west aesthetic of you know mm-hmm. the harmon the lone harmonica singing folk songs, or uh, this is another one I thought of. Would call it folk, and it's we'll folk that. folk music tied with folk tales. So you oh, take that's folk great. tales of a country and mesh them and mash them with your DC characters. Yeah, and I mean, put that's... that together. Yeah, that's amazing. I love, love that one. We got both kinds of music here, country and country western. And western. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, I've I've got a I've got a pitch here. So uh we are always following like the multiverse exploration or like time manipulation on our main yeah. earth. But on every other earth they have they must by definition, have time adventures or multiverse adventures or things like yeah. that. And I want to take one where some on on this other Earth, a flash, you know, uh, messes up a time adventure and it starts rippling through the the multiverse, but it's smashing time periods together. Okay, kind of a, a, another kind of time crisis. Yeah, but his that Earth where that's happening is like a kind of. 20s to 40s kind of vibe yeah. and we call it swing time oh and every, that's good and <laughs> smashing like through through different uh, through different eras and stuff yeah. but you can get like i, I want to see like zoot suit like yeah. batman and, like that, that kind of thing so yeah Ooh, i like that yeah no that's good yeah um they should also just do a mini series that's called indie and it's just a bunch of like indie publishers and like writers and stuff and we bring them all together and do huge crossovers and stuff like that that'd be fun uh yeah uh, obviously nice that's what we all want uh okay let's keep it going let's do it all right next question comes from josh wiley who asks have you heard deranged by coheed and cambria and if so what are your thoughts I love how they portray the Joker as obsessed with the idea of being Bruce's equal or counterpoint. I actually don't know. I actually don't know this either. And I'm a big Cody fan. John, do you know this song? I do not. All three of us don't know the song. (laughs) But what I can say is, I mean, if that's the exact right interpretation, Joker's like Joker's whole thing is about meaning the most to Batman, right? Like, yeah. think of in, in animation or in all, all these different things. Like, if Batman, if they think he's dead or retired, what happens to the Joker? He kind of just stops existing, yeah. you know? And then, uh, uh, like, in, um, what is it, Death of the Family, Joker's whole thing is like, the family is a distraction. I'll get rid of Harley. You get rid of the Robins and stuff, and we'll start over, me and you. Oh, interesting. You know, like, uh, there's always this idea of them as a sort of binary thing, or each of them needing each other as much. And so that's 100% what the Joker would think, so... Um, I'm gonna have to listen to the song. But well, yeah, yeah, I, I only know really it. know Coheed from it, like it's in Keeping Secrets, like uh, sort of saga. I don't really know much outside of that. So that's uh, unless that's a part of it, but I, I don't really know. That's cool. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, hmm. All right, let's leave Facebook and head on over to Threads. Th- 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 threads. Oh God, it just comes off your tongue so easily, ladies. Uh, <laughs> I don't nice. Know. Uh, all right, one question from Threads comes from Pod War, who asks. Any recommendations for great scores from lesser known projects outside the Trinity, Ooh. et cetera? Does Shaq's Steel <laughs> secretly have a banger soundtrack? Should I throw the theme from Jonah Hex up on Spotify? I mean, you like the Jonah Hex spot, uh, soundtrack. Well, I mean, well, the Jonah Hex one is, I think, almost entirely done by Mastodon. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, pretty, it's pretty, pretty cool. dope. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean it's very much a time and place kind of thing, but a hundred percent. But like, John, John, what are your recommendations for for scores for like or good like good scores to listen to? And are any of them from a, a weird movie? Or by weird, I just mean not Superman, not Batman, not right? War. Right, of course. Uh, so, um, I actually I, I listen to a bunch of different stuff, and I can say with one hundred percent certainty, Steel does not have a banger soundtrack. <laughs> uh, I listened to it, and the main theme felt like a Frankenstein of a bunch of different little theme ideas that they took from a bunch of different things. Oh yeah, and I, I made it through the theme, and I was like, I, "That's if that is indicative of the rest of the score, I 
I cannot listen to it. Yeah, so I, I, I cannot put my two my two uh, my you know my two cents behind Steel, but I do have a couple of other ones. Totally, and, and I mean the the other thing with Steel too is it's more soundtrack. You do get a couple of Shaq songs on there, so if you like Shaq as a musician, <laughs> then I guess check out. You Steel are soundtrack. not doing much to sell that i'm sorry <laughs> yeah sorry so then what what else is out there what else would you recommend uh two scores that i love um one would be constantine yeah the score to constantine is fantastic um they use because there's a religious overtone they use a lot of gregorian chant songs um but they use them in a more modern choir a lot of higher voices so you sound sounds a little bit more angelic a lot of like women's voices and stuff like that in the in a full choir instead of just uh instead of just sort of like a gregorian chant um and it's it kind of sounds in kin with some of the stuff that um uh Hans Zimmer was doing around that time it actually reminded when i listened to it, it actually reminded me a little bit of the uh, soundtrack to Black Hawk Down, which is what which uh, Hans Zimmer did. Um, but it's a fantastic score. It's it's a little creepy, which I yeah. love, um, because that fits really well with the tone of the one of the uh, uh, of the movie. And the other one I'll say, because it is technically a DC movie, is the soundtrack to Red. Oh, the shit. soundtrack to Red. really is really good it is it is john james bond adjacent a little bit of that john williams catch me if you can soundtrack in there uh it's a lot of fun oh and a little bit of oceans 11 like you can hear the influence of the different like like sort of spy-ish type movies that have come before it i really enjoy it interesting i the constantine one's a a real great one to put in there because that movie like fucking is great yeah that i i think the general like reevaluation of that movie i'm like so behind it because uh i think it's it's easy to crap on superficial things like he's not blonde he's not you know he's doesn't have a english accent like yeah all those kind of things and then you watch the movie you're like this movie fucking rules (laughs) like it's so good um yeah, yeah, the, Gavin the fact that he's not the fact that he's not blonde or, or oh, british yeah. uh does n- nothing to dissuade me from loving that movie what totally. does dissuade me from loving that movie is gavin rossdale's performance <laughs> gavin rossdale is by far the worst part of that movie <laughs> I, mean, truly. I swear the next time i hear finger looking good uh <laughs> I'm, I'm probably gonna vomit um i i love bush and and i and i love the band too um but sorry it was a bad joke Um, (laughs) no such thing in this podcast i was more just shaking my head because both you and richard made the same joke at the same time (laughs) oh god it's contagious yeah yeah um Uh, yeah let's see i'm just trying to think of a trying to think like soundtrack wise like batman 89 like I mean that one. I mean you Prince like. Well, I know. Sorry, I was I was trying to think beyond Batman Super, but yes, I mean obviously those are amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean Watchmen. Watchmen score is good too. It's, it's really good. Bob Dylan, like you're getting well it, it, the soundtrack stuff too, like the needle drop stuff. I mean, I I will say Snyder is. It's hit or miss, but it's only because it's it's just case by case. Sometimes it just really works, and sometimes it, you're like, yeah, that's a little much. But but when it works, <laughs> it works. I do think that that opening sequence works pretty well. Yeah, um, I think that Birds of Prey movie had a lot of really fun music. Birds of Prey had a lot of fun music. I think that's the other thing too. Sometimes you get these movies with like really solid soundtrack. Yeah, as right. opposed to score, but, score. I mean, the score is in there too. Like, I, if I think of something like the Suicide Squad, the score components of it aren't too intense, but there's some good stuff. You know, like there's, uh, there's like the actiony stuff. There's the big swelling uh, thing at the end where Ratcatcher Two is saving the day. She's flashing back about her <laughs> dad and stuff. Like, there's some good score stuff in there, but really, the more fun stuff is the needle drop. Right, tracky things that are in that movie, right? Yeah, I do think like Zimmer does have some cool stuff. Like if you're talking about scores, but 100. Um, but yeah, I think Watchmen for like just like classic songs, like The Sound of Silence, but like Bob Dylan, like you're just getting like you know 
some really epic stuff. Um, I hate that I'm going to say the Joker had some pretty good slag needle drops. See, I and and truly, I couldn't even tell you what the score for that movie sounds like. I, is there one? A, a, like Did a, we have this conversation after we watched it? <laughs> was I like, is there a score for Joker? Yeah, I don't remember, but I know that there was like there was a few needle drops in right. it though. Yeah, um, interesting. But yeah, I I think that's. I mean, partly it's about the exposure thing, but I think that's this is the other piece of it is really outside of the Batman movies and the Superman movies. And I would say wonder woman, the scores have been a lot less impactful than maybe some of the sound tracks. Yeah. You know, I agree. Well, I also think that, and I don't know if it's largely because of Hans Zimmer, um, or if it's just the way things are going. Um, there's been a shift. Um, I think away from thematic music to almost mood music. Right. You mentioned before about um uh, about Hans Zimmer's uh, Batman score, like just being or uh, theme being percussion, and yeah. to me that's really because there's not really a theme. Like I went, uh, I went, I was listening to a few other ones, and I'm like, some of these it's not really themes, they're moods. Um, yeah. and part of that I think is because like with John Williams, and I'm I'm gonna use him because he's the most obvious and iconic. Uh, one to use he writes in the style of the romantic opera which is the what's called the light motif which is that each character gets a theme or yeah. a moment gets a theme and those themes come back right um and that's very much uh common uh in that style of not just the opera but some symphonic music as well um and you we heard it with uh the batman theme yeah um with uh danny elfman and danny elfman kind of like to me like rides the line between both mood and theme. He's kind sure. of like a best of the both worlds. And Hans Zimmer, I don't think anyone creates mood with music better right. than Hans Zimmer. But Hans Zimmer doesn't really do themes the way that John Williams does theme, which is why it's sometimes it's hard to remember a particular theme. Now, it doesn't say he doesn't always do this because I could sing the theme to the Gladiator movie. Uh, probably at the drop of a hat because that had a great yeah. theme to it. But mood is kind of what we've kind of moved to in terms of some, yeah. uh, cinematic music. I agree. I mean, I, I I could probably, if pressed, I could I could actually probably hum the Hans Zimmer's Batman theme, like the actual melody of it. Like I I know it, but it's maybe like seven notes, and then you just repeat it. Like mm -hmm. we're we're missing the kind of that it's a bigger piece right. you know like the the superman uh, 78 theme or the batman 89 they're like there's like a ton of music and there's other theme it's like in super mario there's more than just the one little right. riff there's a ton of themes and, and things like yeah. that and i i do feel like there's not as many of those out there i, I got give credit where credit's due marvel well, was kind of great for that mm -hmm. um yes the avengers theme we could all yeah, sing yeah. it. The Captain America yeah. theme is yeah. a great one. The Thor theme from the first movie, like the first Thor they movie, did really is really good, good. Like, there's yeah. some good like character themes that are buried in those movies that are a lot more top of mind than some of the other DC. That stuff. Phase One, I mean, there's nothing better. Totally. Uh, all right, let's leave Threads and head on over to Instagram. Now we're going to Instagram. Take some questions and answer them. <laughs> And our question from Instagram comes from GGMU underscore Corolo, who asks, do you miss the various artist soundtracks like Batman Forever and the greatest soundtrack of all time, Spider-Man? While I enjoy the Zimmer bum bum bum, it doesn't compare to Hero by Chad Kroger and Josie Scott or Broken by Seether and Amy Lee. I mean, God, you're you're right in my wheel. I mean, yeah, so God, really you, speaking. You drop that. those two, that's right where I live. All right, I, I've got thoughts on this. Okay, uh, go. Stand back, boys. Uh, <laughs> you're right. Um, Zim, the Zimmer bum 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 does not compare to Hero by Chad Kroger because it's better than Hero by Chad Kroger. Whoa! Uh, what, when I think of a of the tales that we are telling through uh, through our our superheroes, to me, the only style of music you should be using is orchestral score. 
Right. It tells the story so much better. Um, I do not like um, uh, needle drop music in a superhero movie unless it's specifically like diegetic. Right. Sure. So like it's in the movie they're listening to or something like that. And it's, it's but other than that, give me that orchestral score. And that to me tells the story better. I also hate, and this is just me ranting. I hate at the end of movies that have a really good orchestral score when they throw up some shitty pop artist song during the end credits. It drives I, me nuts. It I do miss the hip hop days nuts. of like, this now we're going to Batman. Well, I mean, that was the Will Smith formula. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I'm in a movie <laughs> and I made a song about it. Yeah. I mean, so I'm going to throw yeah. a sl- I, one more category of thing out there, though, because I. I think I agree in principle that as far as storytelling goes, I prefer like orchestral score to uh, needle drops with a Mm -hmm. few exceptions, obviously, but in general. Um, However, I do think there is something to be said for there also just being a soundtrack of songs that did not appear in a movie at all. <laughs> so funny. And you go, but then, like someone was like, these are like, they're either kind of themed, like they're either songs yeah, yeah. that already existed or they're like, put a bunch of songs together. Like we wrote this for this movie. Like, man, one of my favorite, this is not DC, but one of my favorite albums growing up was the City of Angels soundtrack. That really? soundtrack fucking bops and the big number they do i think is is in the movie but it's iris by the goo goo dolls right um but there's also like i grieve by peter gabriel uninvited by Alanis morissette there's a clapton song on there there's like all sorts of God, shit you're on that such soundtrack. like a midwest fucking 50 year old um, mom um <laughs> i fucking love that soundtrack but for so for me like Kiss from a Rose isn't in Batman Forever, but the idea that you watch Batman Forever and they're like, you know that scene where Chase Meridian and Batman are together? It made me think of this. It's just, you just go listen to it on your own later. And you're like, I guess it's like Batman Forever. That's I kind of do miss those a little bit. Like, I don't know why. Maybe it's just the nostalgia, but there's something funny about that way of thinking was like, well, will this song be in the movie? No, absolutely not. Will it be part of the score? Nope, not at all. We're going to sell this album later with a bunch of songs on it that are essentially meaningless. That is always so funny. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I'm probably in between the two of you. Okay. Um, I, I mean, one, I, I, I think orchestral, what I'm guessing is you guys meaning is just like a non-lyrical music. Um, because like, I mean doesn't have to i don't think it has to be orchestral i think it i think having a score over a soundtrack i think makes more sense i don't i i know what you're saying but i I, yeah like i i I think like there's lots of really common uh uses of like more like electronica kind of stuff yeah but but i mean but that but yes i i know i know what you're saying but i think we're still vaguely on board i don't think we're saying it has yeah. to be strings i think we're saying yeah, right like it's gotta yeah, be a yeah, piece yeah. of music. yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah um i do miss the days where um soundtracks would like introduce you to new music like people wrote music for them right now there are some there are a few examples that i think still work i mean one i think that the into the spider verse movies like those soundtracks fucking bop and sure. a lot of the music was written mm-hmm. for those movies and yeah. I and I think that I think it, it but again it has to like thematically work with the movie and right. the character right so a big thing yeah with, a couple of those big songs work really well a big thing with, with Miles, Miles Morales yeah. is that he like wants to go into uh, school for music he is like uh, he develops beats like that's that's very much about who that character is and so I think the inclusion of that kind of music it works for him um, mm-hmm. the other example is obviously uh, Peter Quill and his the 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 Guardians of the Galaxy movies I mean yeah. Yeah, the, that's the perfect example, which is like his mom gave him this thing. And, the, and those are my favorite soundtrack. Those might be my favorite yeah. like pieces of collections of music of, of ever, ever. But again, now, if you ask me to do it, I'm going to get a, a block in my head. But the the hero theme in Guardians of the Galaxy is also amazing. Well, yeah, like I mean, the actual like, yeah, like it's all, when they're all holding like the yes. power stone or whatever, like that piece of music is amazing. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. do the perfect combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The two of those. Um, but I think inherently I do agree for the most part, unless it like 
is a part of what the story is. Right. I mean, right. one of my favorite things ever from TV where they included needle drops and then removed them was the was lost. Right. The way that like they had uh, the first like half of the season we had a bunch of needle drops, but that was all because Hurley was listening to the music on his CD and then yeah, the CD yeah. finally ran out of batteries and then you never had needle drops ever again. Oh man. It was the They coolest... loved doing shit like that on that show. That was the <laughs> coolest shit yeah. I'd ever seen. Cause I remember and it's like, you're listening to this great moment and, and all the, everybody's working together and then it goes to Hurley and he's listening to his headphones and suddenly it like, it cuts out. And then you never hear it ever again. He's like, oh, damn. And then there's never music like that ever again. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. It's the, one of the coolest moments of like score and like soundtrack inclusion. And yeah, that's the way to do it. I mean, Batman and Robin soundtrack. Oh, yeah. It's got Foolish Games by Jewel. Yeah. It's got uh, the end is the beginning is the end by the Smashing Pumpkins. That's a great And song. of course, Gotham City by R. Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's what we all say. I do want to give, if since we're talking about soundtracky things, yeah. I want to make sure that I've said it out loud. We got to give props to the all time goat of like listenable, popular, like uh, kind of e emotional soundtracks. And that's Smallville. Oh, yeah. Smallville like defined that like CW kind of like between mm -hmm. Smallville. College the, rock between like, Smallville on the WB slash CW and Grey's Anatomy over on whatever network it was on. Yeah, that whole like era of like the fray and like God, that um, One Tree Hill soundtrack was probably the best music that I've ever heard on a TV show. They fucking but also Death that like and... like wherever you will go, like all oh, of that yeah. kind of music, like, train, um, fucking Lifehouse, yeah, yeah, all of those. Uh, like the, Smallville is the all time goat of dc stuff yeah that way for me and in terms of just like soundtrack stuff call. in general it's like second to Grey's anatomy yeah like, just like the ubiquity <laughs> or like how it would make or break music too right wow, like yeah. people would hear a song on those shows and then that song would like go up the chart crazy <laughs> yeah i love that I uh, I can i can freely admit that i do not remember having seen a single episode of smallville <gasps> oh at the, on, Look, that first season rips. This the season finale, the first season finale of Smallville. It takes place like at prom. Yeah, and they have the band that does the theme song oh, playing at the uh, prom, and they're playing Remy Zero. The theme I think it's song. Remy Zero. Somebody say <laughs> they're playing that at the prom. They do that. Yeah. yeah. God, I love that shit. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Um, all right. Let's move on, which means we're leaving Instagram. We're heading on over to Reddit. Where everyone's nice and no one's ever mean. That's correct. And the question from Reddit comes from Luzar, who asks, everyone always talks about the iconic hero themes. Danny Elfman's Batman, John Williams' Superman. But what are your favorite villain themes? Ooh. That's a harder I, question. I That's will say hard. one of my favorite villain themes, because it does not scream the villain to me is John Williams Lex Luthor theme. It is so like almost jaunty. Right. And does not seem like the, what I would think of when I think Lex Luthor, even, even, even um, Gene Hackman's Lex Luthor. It just, it, <laughs> that was the only one to me that just. Yeah. Didn't quite seem like it fit. I will say that I thought Zimmer's uh, theme for the Joker for uh, was it Zimmer who did Dark Knight? Yeah, yeah. Um, I like it because it's chaotic. Yeah, it's got all of those like minor seconds and stuff, and yeah. it's But again, like a theme or a right. mood, right? Like right. it's very much in the mood category, as you said. But like that, it's so stressful to hear it and hear it building right. that like. Like as it's yes. going is really which is why which is why I I like it which which is why he's you know he's the king of mood and even though yeah it's not exactly a theme per se yeah um it is it is something that does come back with the Joker so I will I will consider it a theme um but you're right yeah. it it it's made to make you feel uncomfortable and they succeed I think yeah a hundred percent I mean that one the 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 zimmer joker one is the one is what i was going for um although i think the 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 penguin kind of music from batman returns is pretty solid cuz it's so sad 
Like that's mm. the whole the whole arc of like the whole uh push about the penguin in that movie is how goddamn sad he is, right? <laughs> right? And the music does a really good job of that. Like and from like the get go, there's some like doot, 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 kind of Danny Elfman shit at the beginning, but then they dump him in the river and it's all pretty like I don't know, it's just very melancholic. It's not as chaotic, it's not as like um kind of energetic as some of the other themes uh i i think the penguin stuff from batman returns is really good but i also like fucking love that movie yeah do you have one that's tough right i think maybe like lex's like uh theme in bvs oh the the that's the like dum, dum, yeah dum, dum. Mm, i think that's pretty dope it's a pretty good one yeah yeah i, I do like that <laughs> one yeah that's, um, that's a solid pick actually i really do like that yeah i think that's probably it for me um yeah it's a tough <laughs> one um all right let's leave reddit and head on over to the doc score speaking of music oh shit um hang you on you sang so much today hang on let him cook doc scored 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 by the way, that is Zimmer's Batman. Yes. <laughs> so I, just, I did do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, first question from the doc score. It comes from uh, only just butt, butt, fart, butt. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. They've become one. Oh, my God. They are become doc scored. <laughs> oh, my God. I just I just watched uh, uh, Oppenheimer. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where would you rank the Watchmen soundtrack compared to those of the other DC films? I mean, I fucking love it. It's one of my favorites. I... I would say I'm pretty hot and cold on it. Really? I think when it works, it's like the best needle drop shit I've ever seen. Yeah. And then there's a couple where I'm just like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like the hallelujah <laughs> one. I'm like, eh, all right. <laughs> like, yeah. Like the rest of the movie, it's a little up its own ass sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but but truly like the 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 times are a changing. Like yeah. that sequence at the beginning, I think is incredible. Such a great choice. I think it's really, really, really good. So yeah, I, I'm kind of hot, hot and cold on on that one. What about what about you, John? Um, well, I I immediately went to the score. I think the score is really good. Sure. Uh, in that, um, I cannot remember oddly enough, uh, what songs were in the Watchmen as far as needle drops. Um, uh, here, so let me. Uh, let I was me pull. I'm pull, I was trying to pull it up. Yeah, here, let me. What all are the songs? Because, yeah, when you're on the spot, hard to. Uh... Okay. Uh, Watchmen, original motion picture soundtrack. Oh, no. Hang on. Uh, no, that's the actual score. I don't want that. Interesting. All right. So I, I see some, you know, Hallelujah. I'm Your Boogeyman by KC and the Sunshine Band. Yes. Yeah. Um, Sound of Silence, me and Bobby McGee. I mean, there's some there's some fantastic songs on here. You're my thrill by Billy Holiday. That's I think, a great one. Yeah, I actually think like the 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 faster paced songs probably hit better than some of the more melodic ones. I think because mm -hmm. I think maybe those slower, more melodic ones do the they end up being a little too self serious. But having something like some of the other ones in there, kind of, yeah, I don't know. They feel like mm -hmm. they're actually contributing something. <laughs> yeah yeah uh all right let's go to the next question from the marvelous ryan who says you can only listen to one batman movie soundtrack for the rest of your life which one you pick in sound batman hands down sorry which one 89 batman hands down that's the prince one he wrote like yeah he wrote like mm -hmm. 12 songs yeah yeah all you're, about batman you're getting prince mm -hmm. like yeah yep. yeah yeah, it's got to be that one. I mean, I have a hard time saying anything otherwise, right? Is there is there a good example of another movie doing the same thing where they hire one artist to do a full album soundtrack, not the score? I'm, I mean, I'm I sure can think is. of one, but you're not going to like it. Wait, what is it? Uh, uh, Paul Oakenfold in Swordfish. <laughs> That's true. Or I guess Mas <laughs> or I guess Mastodon. Yeah, John well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Do you have a favorite song of that, like, Prince soundtrack? I can tell you it's not the Bat Dance. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, can't all be winners. Uh, the... it's, it, it's got to be Party Man. Yeah. Yeah. At, that's, that's, that's my go-to. Yeah, that's a great one. 
and that's the one that's actually in the parade sequence in the in the movie, right? It's the it's the one when they enter the uh, art. Uh, oh, art it's one. The, yes, the one when in it the comes in is like, let's broaden our minds, Lawrence. <laughs> and he hits the he hits the boombox, and that's the song that plays. It is a As great. It is a great one. I mean, I yeah. also just got like Jack Nicholson dancing to Prince. Like I know he's like as the Joker, but it is kind of like a wild pitch. I think in the room so generally. Funny. Uh, all right. The last two questions are sort of tied together. Okay. Uh, so the first one from Dan, who asks, which opening five notes are more iconic: John Williams' Superman score or Danny Elfman's Batman? Oh my god. I mean, I have, my answer is uh, they're both great, but if we're if we're gonna use the word iconic, I'm gonna go with super the Superman score. Yeah, the Superman. Okay, but I'm trying to. I'm having a mental block. The first five notes of the Superman one. Bum bottom bum bum. Oh, oh yeah. Bah, bah, bah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That. J- yeah, that's a very good one. But the it's got to be. Yeah, it's I that. think I'm going Batman. Yeah, it's got to be Batman. But that's maybe also just a product of my age and sure. We're gonna stuff. have to agree to disagree on that one. <laughs> and I love. Totally... And I love. I love the Batman score. But if we're talking iconic, I I I still got to think it's good. Okay, well, how about the second part of the, the okay. this question from the moral uh, compass of the Doc Squad? Just straight. John Williams Superman score or Superman the animated series opening score. This is this is why I couldn't think of the 78 score. Yeah. Cuz the animated series one is like I think like a spiritual successor like I think it's in the same vein but I mm-hmm. think of that it's like ba 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 like yeah. it's got a lot of energy. I feel like it is like it has a sort of melodic like interlude, like kind of piece too. Like yeah. I think it's inspired by Williams quite a bit, but it's got a little, it's a little punchier. And because I grew up on those cartoons and yeah. stuff too, like that's just like right where I live. So which one? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's gonna be John Williams for I me. So. I also didn't watch the animated series right um i know uh the theme that was written by shirley walker and i did specifically go listen to it because i couldn't remember it yeah and i agree it is a spiritual successor uh to john williams's score but it to me it's but don't stand not... on john williams shoulders and call yourself tall <laughs> 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 i mean i i i'm not i'm not saying it as a shit on john williams thing <laughs> right but, but th- that superman the animated series that, yeah. like I, I would get pumped if I heard the the John Williams theme in watching like a Superman movie. But yeah. if I heard the animated series theme, I'd be like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> they're doing it. Fair. I would get pretty I mean, pumped for that's it. going to be a deep cut, though. So I can yeah. I, I can understand that because that's going to be there's going to be a select few amount of people in the in the theater who are really going to get that. Sure. So. Yeah. No, that's that's fair. Yeah, that's I we didn't talk specifically about it, but I want to throw. I want to throw uh, some love at a different Hunt Zimmer one. Maybe the most themey hmm. uh, superhero one that he did, which is Wonder Woman. Oh, sure. Is that the... the, 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 the like, yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we didn't bring that up, but that's a great one. I fucking love that theme. And it fucking was it, moves and... Did Zimmer do that? I mean, he did that. That was from BTS, right? It's from, that... from BBS, and then, BVS. And then BVS. someone else did the score on on all of like Wonder Woman. And actually, Wonder right. Woman in the No Man's Land scene, there's like some great music in there. And yeah. Stuff. yeah. Um, but I love that Wonder Woman theme. They only use it very briefly in the movie. It's when yes. it's right after No Man's Land when she's in the town and like. But it works yeah. so well. Yeah. It does. It is a great theme. It's probably my, my favorite one out of most of those uh new ones dceu yeah yeah ones i i love that one especially cuz you know it's it's got that nice kind of almost like hair metally guitar yeah sound going and that uh, it's hardcore and i like that it i mean th- but this is the thing where like i i know Hans Zimmer wrote it but he's working with Zack Snyder 
And sometimes when you can line a thing up with Snyder's aesthetic and it actually is badass. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. and that is an example of one. Like the problem with Snyder is he thinks everything is badass and that's just <laughs> not how things work. Yes. But like when it does line up, it's so good, yeah. you know, and, and I think that that theme is definitely up there. Fuck yeah. So yeah. here's a question. So there were two composers listed for, for BVS. One is Hans Zimmer. The other one is Junkie XL. Yes. Which one do you think actually wrote that theme? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I mean, we yeah, we probably should have been clearer as a, they kind of co-did the, the score. Because I do think they worked together. But right. I my, my suspicion, I mean, this is probably wrong, but my suspicion is that Hans Zimmer maybe wrote it. And then some of like maybe the more percussive elements or the more kind of rhythmic mm -hmm. elements of it came from Junkie XL. But that's also me just like 100% speculating. Yeah, yeah. So this is I'm also going to throw this out there. There there have been talks um, that Hans Zimmer uses a team of ghostwriters as well. Oh, for for some some things for some projects. I mean, I maybe would not say... all of the project, but maybe like part of a project. If that's true, they are the most consistent writer's room ever. I I agree. You know, like the, everything agree. comes out, you go like, well, that's on Zimmer. Right. Like, also, look, I mean, you can't, you, you can try to be Williams, but you can't be Williams. I mean, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I, just I don't think, of I don't all think of the Zimmer's ever tried to be. No, Williams. I mean more I of like, you... a, like from a legacy standpoint, you although, can't. Although you, you say that, but I think you'd be surprised how many things Zimmer did. If you yeah. went back and like looked, you'd be like, oh shit, that one was him. That like yeah. Pirates of the also, Caribbean, that's Zimmer. Mm -hmm. Also, like, great theme. Um, like, I will throw this out there. So John Williams wrote a lot of the music. He did not orchestrate his music. Right. The way that those things work is he's writing themes constantly and he passes those themes off to an orchestrator who oh, arranges sure. them for the orchestra. Right. Um, and then Williams comes in and, and conducts them like that. It's a, it's very much a team effort. And I think yeah. oftentimes the orchestrator gets kind of left out, out, of, out of their duties when they have to do a lot because they have to basically take his vision and he will tell them, you know, I think this needs to be in the horns, this needs to be in sure. the strings or blah, 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 whatever. Um, but they are the ones who actually have to put, you know, pen to paper for the entire orchestral score, as it were. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out there. I'm going to start manifesting. I want Howard Shore to do some uh, um, composing work on James Gunn's new DCU somewhere. Howard Shore is the guy that did Lord of the Rings and oh, yeah. The Hobbit. Sure. Would be but, amazing. I mean, think of how many yeah, like, yeah. themes and how they yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like. That's amazing music. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that was the last question. We are done for today. Uh, thanks so much, John, for coming on the podcast. Thank I know you you're friendly. now walking away from a project, but what uh, you do have other projects on the go and uh, places that people can find you online. So why don't you tell people where those are? Yeah, so we are ending the Blast from Our Past podcast, but the podcast is still going to stay up, so you can go back and listen to our entire uh, back catalog. Our last episode isn't going to come out until sometime in early December, so we're trying to finish up. We're trying to get to 300. Once we get to 300, we figure that's a good stopping point. Um, on top of that, I have yeah, that throwback. Be a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> I have throwback trivia takedown, uh, which is a a fun head-to-head uh, -head trivia match, uh, focusing on the pop culture of uh, kind of the 50s to the early 2000s. Uh, gentlemen, if you want to come on, you are more than welcome. Would love to. Sure, have you guys if I can on. just like again stand on Reed's shoulders I would, and call myself tall, I would love to. Yeah, Reed is the ultimate trivia guy. So <laughs> let's make it happen. Like, going against him is just like not fun. But the number of parties that have just ended quietly because Richard doesn't <laughs> like doing trivia games. <laughs> Especially you and your wife together. That's yeah. what you need to do. You need to bring on Mrs. Dr. DC. Yeah. The two of them together are a nightmare. Powerhouse. That, yeah, that's sweet. a word to say. Well, well, you should go You should go head to head against her in our game. <gasps> oh. Yeah. You know what? I'll, yeah, I'll, the... I'll ruin my marriage on Mike. Yeah. Your marriage is strong <laughs> enough to deal with that. I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, the last one I'm going to throw out, even though I've not put out a new episode in a year, uh, mostly just because of time. Uh, but since uh, since BFOP is ending, we're, I'm probably going to get back to it, which is a comic book one, uh, which I did called Comics Underground. Uh, Hell yeah. Was, That's right. Just, we came on and talked about uh, Nice House on the Lake. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, I, and I kept reading it until it just kind of abruptly ended. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was not happy about that because I, I loved that book. I thought it was great, great. series. Uh, you can find all of the links to all of those at bfopnetwork.com. 
That's awesome. Thank you so much, John. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, if you want on. to continue this discussion on uh, with, with us, or maybe send in a question for next week's episode. Next week's episode theme TBD, but we're going to have guests again. Oh you can God. tell I'm in a manic guest booking. <laughs> yeah, mode. yeah. Or it's a, no, it's not even manic. It's just us go. Hey, we can have guests like, on. Right? I could do this. <laughs> yeah, and then we do. We're gonna have the Nerdy North on next week. Oh, nice. So, uh, theme TBD, but you'll see be posted oh this is just us buying all the votes we got for the canadian podcast awards. baby <laughs> come on we, come on you come on our podcast yeah. <laughs> i love that well when that theme comes up you can send us questions through our various social media platforms that's right we're dr dc podcast on the platforms uh the doc phone is always open 208-917-3238 208-917-dceu if, if you're nasty. nasty uh also we've got a website drdcpodcast.com or .ca make sure you give us a five-star review and we will read that on a future episode also we've got a patreon multiple levels lots of extra content for you to dive into and a whole discord where you can have conversations with us online that's right and we've got another podcast Ghost Phasers, a Supernatural rewatch. We're going through uh, every single episode of the CW Supernatural. We talk real world monster lore, behind the scenes stuff about the show. And uh, then I just jump back a second. I go patreon.com slash Dr. DC. I just want to make sure we get people's money. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've got it. No, I want more people's oh, money. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Uh, then uh, start listening to Ghost Phasers and. Yeah, patreon.com slash dr dc yeah <laughs> patreon.com slash ghost yeah, yeah baby there you go uh all right uh john thank you uh, once again uh say goodbye to the good folks out there bye y'all they always fight for what is right live with danger and adventure they are men of this was a brain freeze podcast <laughs>